Today, we're looking at this sweet project that I want to call Living Canvas. That's right, it's a canvas, but it feels alive. There, did you see it? The canvas is moving by itself. Here, let's go to another angle, and you can definitely see that it's moving. This project took me a while just because I'm not good with coding and finding the right hardware. And even now, finding the right hardware to make it work is not that easy. First of all, the noise. The noise is a little bit squeaky. Thankfully, you'll never hear this noise when there's music in a room or when there's a lot of people in the room. The reason why I came up with this idea is that I want to have something that's not boring. A canvas is usually static. It doesn't do anything. It just sits there. Now, with the canvas moving, you can feel as if there's a wind in the room. You can feel as if the canvas is alive. Or if you're really savvy with code, you can always make it jump to the beat of the music. Very slick. Let's take a look at the materials that you'll need. First, you need a servo. The servo only has three wires. One for power, the middle. The green is for ground. The orange is for data. Next, you can use any ESP chip. Myself, I'm using the D1 Mini. Finally, you'll need a 5 volt DC power supply. That's it. The whole thing costs about 15 bucks. Let's take a closer look at the wiring diagram. This is the 5 volt DC power supply going in. Red is for positive, white is for negative or ground. So the ground is feeding the ground on the D1 Mini. The 5 volt is feeding the 5 volts on the D1 Mini. This 5 volt is also feeding the servo right here. The servo also needs ground. And that's this green line right here. And finally, we have the orange data going into the D1 pin of the D1 Mini. Now that we're done with the hardware side, let's look at the software side. This whole code is available down in the link section below. We're not going to go over the top section just because I covered it in other videos before. The secret sauce of the code starts in line 26 and it goes all the way down to 68. Myself, I didn't write this code. I actually copy and paste from another website that showed me how to do all of this. Next up, let's mount it onto the wall. Here you can see the canvas before anything is mounted behind it. And this is what it looks like when it's mounted onto the wall. I use a lot of spacings to make it work to make sure that the servo is hitting the canvas from behind. And then to minimize wiring, I use Cat5 to go all the way down into the floor of the house and then plug it in. I'm using the laser leveler to make sure that the canvas will be at this level. That's good enough to cover the servo and the wires right here. And then from this section, it will be straight down. The thing is held in place with electrical tape, and it's more than good enough to hold this Cat5 cable in place. The sofa will be at this level to cover up the electrical tape. As for the canvas itself, Behind the canvas, I'm laying down some tape. This makes sure that the servo doesn't poke a hole through the canvas over time. I'm not sure if you can see the tape in this lousy photo, but it's definitely there to act as reinforcement for the canvas. Once you successfully flash the code to the D1 Mini, you'll see some entities. I already renamed some of mine, but the only thing that we really care is this fire button right here, which I renamed to Canvas. If we click on it, we'll see some properties, and this is what we need for doing home automations. So let's copy it and do it quickly right now. Go to Settings, click on Automations, Create Automation, Create a new automation, Add a trigger. The trigger will be when Home Assistant detected presence in the living room, since this canvas thing is in the living room. So when presence in the living room is changed to detected, then what would happen? Let's add the action, call a service. The service would be button press, and this button press would be the canvas itself, as seen earlier before. Now click on Save. Give it a name, and then click on Save. This is a very simple automation to get you started. You can certainly build up more fancier automations to do whatever you want. Alright, hopefully this video helps inspire you to combine technology and art. I'm really curious what you will use this technology for, and if you know a servo that doesn't make any squeaky noise, 
please let me know in the comment section below. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel, liking this video, and thanks for subscribing.